Okay, so what we have here um, is the model that started it all. This is a basic Super 17. It's the same three knobs that got us started. Uh, here's the amplifier. This is the rectifier tube. We're going to be playing with this. Over here we have an oscilloscope and we have two uh, volt ohm meters. Uh, the one on the top is going to be uh, displaying uh, plate volts and the one on the bottom is going to be displaying peak to peak RMS volts. And what that means is this is the, the number from which we will be able to calculate output power. So um, uh, watts are whatever this number is squared divided by 8 ohms. Okay, so that's the equipment. Oh, there's one more piece up here. This is a, a, a frequency generator. Um, it says 1007, but that's basically a, a, a 1000 hertz tone that's being fed in right here. This whole thing is going into an 8 ohm dummy loader, or we'd be right now suffering about 120 dB piercing 1 kilohertz tone. So that's the equipment, and uh, oh, we're going to begin right now. Okay, hey, it's Richard again. Um, uh, the last time we were here, we, we talked about uh, rectifier tubes, and I held up some tubes, and uh, I, I talked numbers and volts and some abstract stuff. And so I thought it might be useful if we just go over here to this amplifier, and I'm going to actually show you four different kinds of rectifiers and what effect those rectifiers will have on your tube amplifier in terms of output power and uh, as a function of plate voltage. So without further ado, okay so Super 17, I know there's going to be you know screams when I do this but watch this I'm going to do both switches at the same time and nothing gets hurt because the tube filament actually warms up at the same rate as the filaments in the other tube. So if you're, you know, you know, a shop savvy guy like myself, you can actually do both of these at one at one time under certain circumstances. Now as the tubes warm up, we notice that we're seeing a waveform being displayed on the oscilloscope and we notice that these numbers are changing right here. So what's the purpose of the oscilloscope? Um, we want to find out how high we can get our output before it starts to clip and clipping is basically defined as this wave getting a flat spot that's clipping right there now clipping it's it this is tube clipping this is good clipping it, it that actually sounds nice but if we were to dial it down and clean the waveform up to where it's a perfect sine wave then that is the limit of our clean and right now um it's uh, 1180 uh, excuse me, 11.8 volts RMS peak to peak. We square that number and trust me on this, it's going to fall somewhere between 17 and 18 watts. Our plate voltage is 348 and this is with the 5AR4 tube and we started with this one because if you're just a guy walking in off the street buying a Super 17, that's the tube it's going to come with. So um, looks like we're putting out pretty darn close to 12. I can actually nudge the tone knob and uh, when we when this displays an even 12 volts we know that 12 squared is 144 divided by your 8 ohm load and this is an 18 watt condition right here. We're starting to see the very beginnings of clipping but that's basically you know that's probably somewhere between 4 and 10 percent distortion if you're an audiophile but that's a pretty darn clean guitar signal right there. Okay, I'm going to power down now, let these tubes cool off, and we're going to try a different one. The next tube in our shootout, or whatever you want to call this, is the JJ5Y3. Super common tube. Um, uh, this is used in a lot of amps and has been since, you know, basically going back to World War II. Uh, this tube is ubiquitous. Uh, current new production is the Slovakian one like this. Um, the Russians, yeah, you know, they do a better job with the 5AR4 than they do this. Um, one thing that you got to watch out for when you're buying a rectifier is does it rattle? Because if it does, your combo is going to rattle at certain frequencies. But anyway, we're inserting the tube. Okay. 
And once again, because it's a tube rectifier, I'm going to skip the warm up step. It's a second, and we noticed that our unloaded voltage peaked at 400 there for a minute, and now it's coming down, and this one's coming up, and they are all going to find equilibrium here in just a minute. We have not changed the uh, volume or tone settings since last time. And as you can see here, we're just now cracking 10 volts RMS and we're at 297 and a half on the plates. And as you can see here, already starting to square off a little bit um, on the bottom. So let's just say that our maximum clean is going to be, looks like it's going to be, let's call it 10 volts. 10 volts squared, of course, is 100. And 100 divided by 8, somebody out there tell me, 100 divided by 8, this is a, this is a, a solar-powered calculator, 100 divided by 8 ohms. Okay, so we're putting out 12 and a half watts, so that's um, a pretty substantial decrease. Um, uh, why would we want to do that? Well, this tube is softer, it's going to clip earlier. Um, it looks like here that uh, 298... Um, 300 from the hip went to a lot of trouble to get good voltage tonight. I finally got a variac because uh, our friends at the Georgia Power Company were, you know, very inconsistent. And while I'm building amps, one day I might have 125 volts and one day I might have, you know, 114. So um, to get it to stay straight up and down on 120, we got the variac. So. That is the other end of the spectrum. The first tube I showed you is the hottest tube I use. The 5Y3 is the most common of the lower voltage tubes. Uh, as I remove this tube, it's just cooled off enough for me to touch it. But uh, people always say, Richard, what do I use if I want more sag? Well, this would be your go-to for sag because uh, you're going to push the amp harder to get the same volume you were getting uh, a lot more easily with the 5AR4. So. Um, if, if you're the kind of guy that rolls tubes and you want a soft tube and a hard tube, then in your tube kit, 5Y3 is your saggy, squishy compressing tube and your 5AR4 uh, would be the crisp, clean one. So, um, Matt, keep on rolling and we'll just go ahead and put in, this is a, this tube is, it's not an oddball tube, it's like I said on the last time we talked about this, this tube is common as dirt and it may be actually the oldest um, octal socket tube, octal meaning 8-pin. Um, this is an electro harmonics. Uh, I really dig the electro harmonics for this one. I don't even know if JJ makes a 5U4. I guess they do, but I've never seen it. Um, this tube, the only reason I don't use it all the time is because the, the, the damn bottle is so big. But we're going to go ahead and put it in there. Uh, you recall our settings from before. We're, we're going to be looking to see how far we can get this thing and still have a clean waveform. So, once again, power and standby at the same time. Why did I do that? Because I'm not afraid of stripping my plates because this tube has to warm up at the same rate these do. These are actually already warmer than this one. Um, and here we go. If we look at the oscilloscope, we see here comes the waveform. We see all kind of uh, activity at the output and we see some activity at the uh, the plate volts. Now, the first two we looked at when we had it all the way at the brink of uh, distortion, we were running 350 volts on our plates, which I think is probably the maximum safe voltage before you have to worry about finishing the gig with the same set of tubes. This one here looks like it's going to fall somewhere in the middle. The uh, 5AR4 was at 350. Uh, here we are at 330. 5Y3, 298, 299. Let's call it 300 for the sake of brevity. But um, uh, we're getting, uh, looks like we're getting uh, 11 volts peak to peak RMS. And we still have pretty much a good sine wave there. And starting to square off a little bit on the top right there. That's, that's clipping right there. And we back off to right about there. So 11.2, if we square that, we know 11.66 is the magic number for 17 watts. 11.2 is going to calculate to 16 plus, somewhere between 16 and 17 watts. 
And uh, it looks like you, you, you could run this one all the way up past 18. Now, of course, you're very distorted here. You're playing rock and roll here. You're maybe you're, you're Kerry King, but as you see, I can dime it all, and it actually starts to go back down a little bit as the, uh, you know, the clipping uh, just changes the shape of the waveform. You're not getting any additional output power. So uh, back to the sine wave, and we'll see that once we smooth it out, settles down at about 11.2 volts peak to peak, right at 330 volts on the plates. Coming up next is the solid state rectifier. talk about this last time uh, we talked about rectifiers mostly because I don't use them very often but this is a a solid state rectifier and it's essentially the base of a tube and if you pop the lid off you'll see that there's uh, four 1 in 4007 rectifiers soldered together I'm, but anyway that's what it looks like inside a solid state rectifier I know there's fancier ones I know that Weber has the copper top and you know that's you know somebody else's topic but this is a solid state rectifier we are going to insert it in the same manner that we've inserted all the other tubes now all of a sudden um, this standby switch is 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 an issue and why is that because a solid state rectifier makes B plus voltage the high voltage instantly it doesn't have a filament that has to warm up you turn this thing on and it's boom it's 400 volts probably so what we're going to do is what everybody normally does. We're going to turn on our AC first. And uh, the universal standard time, if you go to the RCA receiving tube manual, is 11 seconds. And, and that's a frequent question. People say, how long should I wait? You know, and I say, well, if you go in by the RCA manual or the military standard, it's 11 seconds. So here we go. We're going to see instant waveform. We're going to see a lot of activity here. We've got um, uh, idle voltage of 324 that's going to change here as we go like that boom here comes the waveform and now we're jumping up to 365 it looks like um, our uh, everything is in the same place as it was we have a we have a uh, we have a clean waveform and we're in excess of 18 watts now uh, 12 squared even is your 18 watts so let's see how far we can take this um, uh, somebody's gonna have to get out a calculator here. Let's call it, let's call it 1250. That's probably good for another whole watt. I got, a, I have a degree in psychology, you know, and I, I don't even know how to operate a telephone, unless it's got a rotary dial on it. But is anybody giving me a number? No. Oh, for heaven's sakes, 12.5 <laughs> times 12.5 equals 156.25 divided by eight, and that is 19 and a half watts with a solid state rectifier. It was the squared that threw me The out. squared, which, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, and again, that formula for all that BS that just came out of my mouth, it is peak to peak volts RMS measured at the speaker terminals. Peak to peak meaning from the bottom to the top, the full duty cycle, peak to peak. Um, and uh, we're count and this is a true RMS meter, so we don't have to worry about compensating for RMS, so we don't have to multiply times 0.919 or any of that. It's just that straight RMS volts. We square it, we divide it by our ohms, and now we have a Super 17 putting out 19 and a half watts. And you're thinking, wow, that's great, you know, 19 and a half watts. Uh, there's a solid 12.6 with a clean sine wave. Uh, well past 19 and a half watts, approaching 20 watts uh, at this point. Um, I've made versions of this amp that had a solid state rectifier, but the transformer voltage was lower, and I was using the solid state rectifier to bring, this was particularly in the Mark III, I used the solid state rectifier to bring the voltage up higher. You just can't Willy nilly use a uh, you know a solid state rectifier anywhere you want in an EL84 environment. But that's today's lesson. Hope you loved it, and uh, keep those cards and letters coming. See you.